Is Stalker Clear Skies a bad game? The short answer is no. And well, yes. All right, now hear me out, hear me out. We're gonna organize this a bit better than the last Shadow of Chernobyl video. Get into a brief background, then we'll go over the pros and cons. Stalker Clear Skies takes place uh, right before the Shadow of Chernobyl and leads into the beginning of it as a prequel would. Uh, you play as Scar, who's a merc who just survived a psychic emission. It's like, imagine you're playing Daisy and you're on the mall, can you get knocked out? That's basically what Scar survived, the Chernobyl power plant. But by surviving, Scar is now tied in to the zone. He's now one with the zone. And these emissions will eventually kill him if they're not stopped. This new faction, which is ironically named Clear Skies, believes uh, this is the defensive response from the zone. So th the deeper people get, the more the zone is sending out these responses to protect itself. Uh, and your goal, this story, is to find out how these emissions are happening and to stop them. So let's start with the things Stalker Clear Sky does good. We can talk about more of this story later. First of all on the list, we have the graphics. The graphics are way better. This game came out uh, a little over a year and a half after Shadow of Chernobyl. and looks phenomenally better. I mean, the upgraded AI and upgraded graphics, it looks fantastic. Um, the, the camera work, you know, you saw it a little bit in Shadow of Chernobyl, but the, the camera work they've added into Clear Skies um, around the story missions is really nice. Pretty neat. Uh, you can see, you know, the anomalies look way... They're also, the, the anomalies are harder to find, first of all, um, but they look way cooler. Um, you know, the water effects, the rain, the lightning. God dang, the lightning looks so good in this game. It looks fan-fucking-tastic for a game that came out in 2008. Another thing I really enjoyed about Clear Skies is um, just to see the friendlies set up in different places. Like friendlies in Agropom and the, the building, the military building, uh, or the, re sorry, the research facility. Uh, it just looks so much cooler. And the swamp, golly, the swamp, the, the, the Clear Skies HQ and the swamp on the bottom left-hand side of the map is very cool. Um, it's an awesome addition. And you can have a lot of cool fights there, as well as Lamont's. Lamont's was cool. I didn't explore it probably the most because, you know, that's the end game. Can't turn back, so I didn't explore it as much as I could. Dip dive through a bus, and that was frustrating. But back to the positives, back to the positives. The hospital set piece, much like Shadow of Chernobyl, um, I like the, the in-game set pieces. This one, not quite as much, but the hospital, fighting through the hospital was really cool. However, though, once you get to that helo, what the f***? Shooting this helo down was awful. I think I was ended up finishing it off with a pistol, just kind of praying that I wouldn't die, like glitched out under a roof. It was a struggle for me. The set piece besides that, awesome. The helo, kind of kind of showed me where the end of the game was heading, I guess. My last point here is really the story, um, and not necessarily the story, um, as it was, you know, kind of man, it wasn't that great. But it was, the story itself was much more clear, focused, and easy to follow. Holy shit, I forgot about factions. The comments would roast me if I didn't mention factions. On another note, leave a comment down below with what other parts of the game you thought were pros and what other parts of the game you enjoyed. It would be nice to see other um, loners and stalkers' opinions down in the comments for that because most people, the reason I made this YouTube channel is to talk about games like this because I have no friends to talk about and my wife just rolls her eyes when I talk about them. So leave your comments down in the section below uh, and let's start a conversation down there and maybe it'll lead to some more videos or just some good conversations about Stalker or any other survival games, really. But the faction system. The faction system is such a cool addition to the game. Um, I haven't got to prep yet, yet, so I'm hoping it's in there. I'm assuming it's an anomaly. Um, the first faction you meet is, uh, it's called Clear Sky. You know, title of the game, makes sense. Uh, and they are trying to understand and learn about the zone and how it works. Uh, you know, they have some nice digs, they have some cool camo. Uh, the Swamp is really cool and it's a nice addition to the game as well. Uh, I really enjoyed how the story set them up and, you know, just the, the overall vibe they had. Uh, this is a prequel game, so it happens before Shadow of Chernobyl, so unfortunately all or most of Clear Sky is either in hiding or dead before Shadow of Chernobyl, so we'll never really see them carry on, which kind of sucks because I like Clear Sky, I like the area, I like um, their camo and just kind of, you know, the more scientific approach the learning and understanding versus manipulating destroying turning it into a cult type uh, the faction system works kind of like a rep system if you've played world of warcraft or any other game with a rep uh, the more you help a faction the more they'll start to like you and in some cases like duty and freedom the more you help duty the more freedom hates you the more you help freedom the more duty hates you um, in those cases you know if you say on my playthrough i help duty a lot freedom would come kill me if they saw me um, and I would kind of lose access to those missions, which is kind of, it was really cool. And I'm not sure if it was revolutionary, but it was pretty neat. It's pretty neat for the game. 
it definitely adds some replayability. And some of these factions are pretty much always hostile, like the military stalkers in Monolith, like they always just want to kill you and see you die a very painful death. You can become friends with a lot of other factions, like Clear Sky will be maxed out basically. The bandits will always be bad, but you know, you can become better friends with mercs. You can become better friends with loners. And uh, one last thing I'll touch on here is just weapons. The Clear Sky has 42 weapons with seven variants. Uh, a lot of these are from Shadow of Chernobyl, but like the RP-74 is cool. Um, the hunting shotgun, I think I used a lot or used the most in the early game. Um, the browning pistol is in there as well. What the fuck were they thinking with the ADS of the pistol here? Like, you don't even get irons. You have like this weird, I like to play with the, uh, called the reticle, the crosshair off, and you're point firing the pistol. Like, what the frick is that, man? Where's the ADS at? I'm trying to be accurate. This game already is inaccurate when you, when you shoot. You know, you learn that in Shadow of Chernobyl. You know, you're not always going to hit every bullet. The bloom, I guess, or the spread of bullets is just absolutely insane. So where I need my ADS? Where's it at? Not in clear skies. That's where. All right. Well, we kind of kicked off the uh, the cons a little early here. So let's just continue on and we'll go with the insane amount of bugs. Uh, they were never ending. It ended up getting me killed a couple times. More than I'd have thought anyway, especially from this game being a sequel. I mean, prequel. It seems like the upgraded AI and graphics came with a lot more issues than they noticed, but I mean, this game was rushed out. A year and a half isn't a long time to make a game, so I'd understand some bugs, but man, there is, there is rough. Shadow of Chernobyl, I guess I got lucky and didn't see quite as many. You know, I still died through walls, you know, still got killed by some weird stuff, but man, this game would have me stuck in trees, stuck in rocks, getting shot through who knows what. The next con I have in my notes here is missions that could be seen as repetitive and then wrote nothing about them so i'm not real sure why i wrote that uh, did you feel did you feel missions could be repetitive uh the only mission i guess i didn't really like per se was the bridge mission with the sniper overlooking it it's not that i didn't like the mission or that it was a bad mission but the sniper respawned so much and so fast i thought i would never get through there you know you know you don't have the most ammo right there i struggled with actually getting my bullets to hit him in the head so it was a little struggle um, but yeah, let me know what, what's your thought of the missions down below. My ma my last complaint, and this is a major one, is the damn ending. I got this in all caps. Why the heck did Clear Sky just do this awesome big push where everyone dies just for you to shoot Sherlock with a railgun? The overall chase with Sherlock was pretty neat. I enjoyed it. Uh, but then the end, like he shoots with me shooting Sherlock a bunch of times with a giant health bar as he's running across the route. That's pretty lackluster for all you go through just to get there. Uh, it is the only ending, so that's how it leads into Shadow of Chernobyl. So you get a cool little cutscene at the end there and that kind of shows Strelok watching the TVs becoming, you know, leading into the first game. So that's pretty neat. Um, people also mentioned there's a lack of multiple endings, but I mean, I don't know. You know, I made a big deal about it in the other one because it is cool. I, I, I always enjoy multiple endings, but this being a prequel, you don't really set yourself up for that. You don't really give yourself the chance to make multiple endings because either way it has to lead into the first game. And, you know, let me know down below other things you disliked about Clear Sky or liked. Obviously, um, I would love to hear your opinion. Uh, let me know if you liked some of the things I disliked or I disliked some of the things you did like. This could be spicy. But yeah, let me down down below the video. My final thoughts on Clear Sky. Um, is it a bad game? Meh. Can you still have a lot of those flaws that Clear Skies has with mods? Meh, kind of. But it's also, I mean, it's a good game. There's there's a lot of good to it. What sucks is that some things can completely go unnoticed, like crafting or upgrade system, which probably should have went in pros, but you know, you can go through most of the game without ever noticing it. But like, I carried a rifle all the way through the game because I had it most of the way upgraded. I could use AK ammo, and I thought that was pretty neat, especially for Stalker, uh, into this horror survival shooter game pretty neat um why not list that in a pro uh, i don't know it's not a big part of the game so i didn't really feel like it belonged there but it is a part of the game i enjoyed just like the artifacts you know the artifacts are really cool and they're really well graphically made but i didn't find my first artifact until a few hours in because i wasn't strictly looking for them i was playing the game uh, and i only ended up finding a couple of them i'm not asking for them to be quite as easy as shadow of chernobyl i do like they made it harder and you have to have the uh, like the gig the tool to find artifact but i would have enjoyed a mission or you know just like these guide missions i would have enjoyed a guided mission on how to find one and maybe the guy explodes or something and that's how you get your first artifact that could be cool could have been a well done mission on like, the dangers and how cool it is to to go artifact hunting i think in anomaly i'm gonna try to do that a lot maybe in pripyat honestly if they're cool uh, but i know i've seen them in anomaly and gamma they look awesome so i'm excited to do that uh, maybe there is one in clear sky and i just missed it uh, let me know 
in the comments below. Anyways, the final point is, would I recommend this game? Absolutely. Especially if you want to play the original games to prepare for Stalker 2, because that's what I was originally doing. I started at the beginning of the year with Stalker uh, Shadow of Chernobyl. Uh, now I'm going through Clear Skies, and then Pripyat will be next. Uh, but, and that's a big ass but, play Clear Skies with mods. Play it with mods. Don't play vanilla like I did. But if you do, let me know down below your experience because mine was rough. Either way, let me know your thoughts on this video down below. Uh, I'm trying to get better doing this. I would love to make some good videos so we can have some good conversations about the games I enjoy that I can't talk to with anyone else. Uh, and hopefully you can do that here as well. Uh, thank you once again for joining me on this trip into the exclusion zone. This is Loner JB. Good night.